You boys look like a weird heavy metal band. <laughs> yes, we are a band. Really? Yeah. So what do you play? Symphonic, post-apocalyptic, reindeer grinding, Christ abusing, extreme war, pagan, fennoscandic metal. Right. Really interesting. <laughs> What up, everyone? DJ Nubis here with you on Metal Time Radio Podcast, doing another trailer reaction. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> so, a little bit of backstory. This is obviously for um, the new reboot remake of The Crow. Directed by Rupert Sanders, who worked on Ghost in the Shell, the live action version, as well as Snow White and the Huntsman. That's not a good sign if you're. I mean, I saw those films. I didn't care for them. So, like, I'm not. I'm not really motivated right off the bat. Now, cast consists of, at least as far as like the more notable names, Bill Skarsgård, which I just did a trailer reaction with Mr. Tony the Dead a couple weeks ago. Or uh, Bill or Kills the World or something like that. But Bill looks like really good in that film. That looks like a lot of fun. Uh, it looks strongly put together. I also have Danny Houston and FKA Twigs. I believe she's a singer. Um, but yeah, uh, I, you know, look, I, back in 1993, uh, actually before that, I'd seen uh, Rapid Fire with Brandon Lee from the original crow and you know obviously he's the son of legendary martial artist bruce lee uh brandon had martial arts skills himself uh in that film rapid fire which is incredibly good so when it came to the crow like i remember seeing like you know interviews with brandon and stuff leading up to the film i didn't know much about the the the, the graphic novel which it's based um so I was totally new to the the premise and the movie itself. So when I went in, immediately, obviously, leading up to it, Brandon had died from an accident on the set where uh, a piece of shrapnel got in one of the guns that was used to shoot at him. And uh, if I recall, the actor who played Fun Boy, um, he really uh, was struggled with that long after the fact even though he was still kind of doing acting here and there like i read an interview where he was uh very torn up about what happened that day um which just leads you know to the, like the alec baldwin thing that happened a couple of years ago on set like that shit should not be happening anymore at any any way shape or possible that shit kind of be happening those kind of like mistakes are costing lives and they need to be fixed um, but anyway, like, uh, when I finally saw the film, I went there, like, I think I saw it like four or five times in the theaters the year it came out. Like I fell in love with that film so much. The, you know, never mind the, the, the parallels to Brandon and, you know, his fiance and what was happening in his own life. The on-screen actors, like the movies, the movie is, uh, the plot is very moving and, uh, you know, Eric Draven and Shelley Webster, you know, the, the characters and what happened and, you know, uh, magnificent performances by David Patrick Kelly, who plays villains like no other. Uh, you know, it just the film is so amazing. And yet Ernie Hudson in it and Michael Wincott, uh, Tony Todd, uh, and just so many, so many great actors involved in a great story is well put together. And, you know, they did sequels after that, that, you know, really didn't live up to I mean, you could probably enjoy them to a certain degree, but like, there's just something about Brandon uh, and the first crow that's just very moving. And I know people kind of make an excuse like, well, it's because Brandon died. Well, for some people that might be, yeah, sure. That plays a part, but uh, even if he had lived like that movie is so goddamn good. Top to bottom. It's great action, great emotion. 
uh, well acted. Just so many great things about it. So eventually, I think Neko ended up giving me the gra uh, the graphic novel of The Crow, which I don't know where it's at, but I do also from back in the day. I've probably shown this before, um, but I picked this up probably around that time in the 90s, uh, of course, is the uh, figurine of The Crow and Brandon Lee. Uh, I've had this forever. I fucking love it. Never took it out. Um, but that's how much this film means to me. So much sack that it's one of two films that are my favorites of all time. So that says something when it comes to just movies in general, like what your top films are. Like some people, I believe, like Lady Fabula, still have Jaws as the number one film she's ever seen, which a lot of people would. Um, for me, it's The Crow and Brotherhood of the Wolf. These are two films that have not ever lost grip on that number one spot. Uh, and in some ways, The Crow actually is kind of more than The Brotherhood because Brotherhood, you know, while it's a fantastic movie, doesn't have the same effect that The Crow did. And uh, yeah, just it's so amazing. I think even at the time, if I still have it, I have the VH copy of The Crow, which for some reason at the time that after Brandon's death, I thought that uh, I thought for sure the movie would never be on DVD or, or anything because I thought, oh, man, they're going to just net tank, you know, they're going to let it do its thing in the theaters and then just kind of not do any more with it. So my dumb ass immediately bought the VHS, which was like 80 bucks. Like I had it before everybody else. And of course, VHS was still a thing in the early 90s. So uh, I watched the shit out of it. But I, I loved that movie so much that I was willing to pay the 80 bucks, uh, hoping that, you know, not thinking that DVDs would eventually come out of it, which it did. And of course, now you have Blu-rays and everything else. So it's getting better and better. 4K, I guess. Uh but that's how much the movie meant to me. Like I was willing to do that in case for whatever reason it never did get released. Um, so now here we are with a reboot. This isn't a sequel. It's an actual direct re remake of the, f the first film. And I, I, you know, I can't lie. There's going to be bias. I had the same issue uh, with one of my all time favorite horror films in Suspiria when they redid that. But for people that follow me during my review and talking about that, uh, even though Argento's is still far superior than the remake, I thought the director did enough things differently with Suspiria that outside of that last 10 or 15 minutes, I thought the film was very original and very cool. He actually took the entire trilogy of Suspiria and, and you know, the, the other parts of the trilogy and brought them together. So uh, he did enough things differently to make that, a more unique film and it wasn't a direct copy of Suspiria. But this is supposed to be basically a carbon copy. Now I've haven't got to the plot point. I kind of briefly skimmed over. So I think there's going to be some differences in here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to enjoy it. Um, as I said, yeah, Bill Skarsgård, Danny Hudson, FKA Twigs. Uh, Twigs is going to play uh, Shelley Webster. Bill, of course, is going to be Eric Draven. Plot is, soulmates Eric Draven and Shelley Webster are brutally murdered. Given the chance to save his true love by sacrificing himself, Eric sets out to seek revenge, traversing the worlds of the living and the dead to put the wrong things right now. He says, given the chance to save his true love by sacrificing himself. I'm not sure what that really means here. So if you're not familiar in the original film, uh, both Draven and Shelley Webster are killed. Now she... He dies from being shot in the back and then thrown out a, a loft window and dies upon impact on the ground. She was brutally raped, stabbed, and everything, and then she kind of died in the hospital a few hours later. Nothing in the original Crow was anywhere where Eric was like saving her from anything in you know the other world or you know hell, heaven or hell. Um, by sacrifice himself. So I'm not sure exactly what that necessarily means. Maybe the trailer will give us an example of what that's going to mean. Um, but you can see a little still here. Uh, that's Scar's Guard on the left, and then, of course, Twig's on the right. So these are your characters. Uh, I don't know if the original, like one thing that stood out about the original Crow is the soundtrack. 
So you had Graham Ravel do the basically the sort of orchestral type stuff, the classical stuff, and then there was the alternative rock soundtrack, which was amazing. A lot of great bands on there, The Cure, Nine Inch Nails, so on. Um, so I don't, but the vibe that from some of the other stills that I see of this film could be going more of a hip hop direction. They may not be doing rock at all. So I'm not a big hip hop fan. I'm not really objective to it, but just, it's not me. It's not who I am. I love rock and metal. And even though there's pop stuff here and there, I can handle, like, I'm just not a big hip hop person. So I think sometimes when I watch like an action movie, if they start blasting the hip hop, like it doesn't really match what's going on. I always feel like rock and metal is more aggressive and chaotic and gives you that like uh, adrenaline rush that you want when you're seeing fighting or stuff like that. So I don't get that feeling with hip hop at all. Um, it's just a whole different vibe for me, but I don't know. I don't know what the soundtrack is going to look like here. So um, let's get to it. Let's check it out. This is the remake of the crow. What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. You feel like my person? <laughs> you feel like my person. What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things. I shouldn't have seen any of it. Someone dies. A crow carries a soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Until you put the wrong things right. You were given the power of a god. But you're running out of time to save her. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. I killed you. Yeah, you did. We have a problem. He came for us. First impulse. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. What you become? You know that love promises only pain. You have no idea what hell awaits you. No, I do. How many people have you loved? I never be alone. Okay. Thoughts. So, um, well, I figured the music certainly went the different direction. So it kind of loses an appeal there with that. But this is 2024. So, you know, we don't, the scene is a lot different now in terms of mainstream music. Um, the good news this film, despite being a remake of the original, really has no connection to it. Like you can tell immediately that it's got a different vibe, a different premise. Um, 
it's it, it, you can also tell also it's it's almost doing the whole like Suspiria remake thing where it's going with a more artistic visual uh, appeal. Uh, the girl kind of dancing, and I don't know if that's supposed to be Shelley and like the afterlife or whatever. So I'm still not sure exactly what he's supposed to save her from. I'm not like it, it, that. I'm not clear on that. Um, now the deaths and some of the violence is a bit more gruesome. Um, that's a plus, I guess. But I think here's here's my disconnect with this this trailer um, is that you just don't get that emotional connection that you would watching the original. So he's fighting for basically the same thing for love, but you don't really feel it. Like there, the, and this is an acting issue. This is more of acting. Like you're not feeling that connection as you did with Brandon and the actress that he was working with on the original film. Uh now I'm look, I'm not being overly critical here. Like I, I think I'm being kind of fair uh, in my presentation. Some people think, well, you're just hating. No, I'm not hating. Um, there's bias, but I'm not hating. Like I I see some things that I think is kind of cool that the director is doing. And that and again, the fact that he's kind of going with a whole different storyline is is actually a good thing because it tells me I can still like the Suspiria remake make a, a distinguished difference between this remake and the original film. So I don't think I'm going to like this. I mean, who knows? I, I gave the remake a, like a seven out of 10, right? So Argento's is a 10 out of 10, whereas the remake was a seven. So I, that's a fair assessment for me. Whoa. And then the cat's getting crazy. Um, This, you know, I don't, know if i'm gonna rush out to see it uh, you know it's one of these things like there's curiosity there but i can tell there's just a lot of things i'm not gonna like about it and it might piss me off but who knows uh i didn't think i'd like to remake it all i'd end up enjoying it at least to a point i could end up enjoying this to a point there's some I forget who the the big the old white guy that she's like he's coming for us said like that guy was in the Wolverine movie and he's been in other films where he's done a good I like that actor, um, but yeah there's a, there's also a bit of a with the original there's a sense of like charisma aesthetic like there's some aesthetic here with this one but it's again it's all done in a way that's more artsy like they're just trying to it's like the bait and switch type of thing like you, you don't want to you don't want people to focus on whether the weaknesses of the movie so they're going to try to like dolly it up to kind of like sidestep that and say oh yeah we're we're just being very creative and imaginative with how we're presenting it so we're gonna flashy with all this this and this and then like just again it's a trailer so i can't make a final distinction on how this film's going to be but I don't feel that connection with love. Like it's not there. And so it, it just, again, it depends on when I see it and how I feel afterwards, but just off the bat, I'm not getting that same vibe. Like that's the thing that makes the original crow so special is that it hits you here just like it does here and in, in your visual. So, uh, and you know, again, music plays a part of that. Some people might be fine with the musical choices there, but it just kind of throws me off the game. Like I, when you're, when you're going after vengeance and, and revenge, like uh, hip hop's not going to do it for me. I need like fucking serious, angry music to, to get the job done. So that, but that's a personal thing. That's not, you know, not everybody's into metal and rock. So I, I get that. Um, Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't know when I'll see this, but they didn't say summer, so we're still at probably like what July, maybe is that what they're saying, or June? Uh, it's a long ways away, but uh, I'm curious though, because originally Jason Momo was actually supposed to play Draven, and I'm you know, I don't know, maybe that would have been a little bit better despite still not enjoying a remake. But <laughs> uh, the boy kills world, world thing with Skarsgård looks fucking amazing. So it's nothing against Bill. I actually like Bill and a lot of different things that I've seen him in. He's a pretty versatile actor. Uh, one thing I noticed, though, that 
throughout time and you know when you remember like um the guy from avatar uh waterson is that his name sam worth sam worthington so he became like this hot item for a while and i thought his acting was kind of bland so a lot of the movies he was doing i just thought were shit like the remake of clash um terminator genesis like just stuff like that like i just did not think he's a very good actor in those films um Skarsgård is a good actor. He's much better than Worthington, in my opinion. But he's been this thing where, oh, we're gonna make this, so we gotta put Bill in there. You know, we gotta have Bill in this and this and this. Like you can kind of look at, think outside the box a little bit. You don't necessarily need the hottest face to do these kind of things. Brandon wasn't even really a brand name when he did The Crow, um, so it was kind of like a chance, even though it was a more independent movie when they made it. This is a bigger budget, obviously, but. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, don't know if I saw anything that's basically the wokeness about it. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, right off the bat, I just, uh, it's, I can tell it's not going to live up to the other one, but that's an inherent bias. And I'm, I'm honest about that. So anyway, give me your fucking thoughts. What do you think? How do you feel about this? Uh, are you willing to give it a chance? Or are you just going to say, fuck it, no way, not happening? Uh, let me know in the comments, and then uh, we'll talk about it. Later, cheers. Just